In March of this year, I bought a 2022 Trek Checkpoint SL5, converted it to a touring bike, rode it for about 1,400 miles of training, and then took it on an epic 3,669 mile journey from New York City to San Francisco. If you find this video useful, please hit the thumbs up button and wait till the end and I'll tell you whether I would choose the checkpoint again for this epic journey. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea about the reliability of the checkpoint as a touring bike, especially when used by a heavier rider like myself. I started my training on this bike in March of 2022 at about 210 pounds. I went out the door from Central Park, New York City in June uh, at 200 pounds and would end up finishing this journey at 181 pounds in San Francisco in September. So how do you convert a gravel bike into a touring bike? In addition to adding racks, panniers, bottle cages to turn this gravel bike into a touring bike, three major mechanical changes were performed. First, the rear cassette was changed from the gravel bike GRX that came with the bike to a mountain bike GRX cassette, giving me more gear inches, or let's just say easier gearing to climb the Rockies. We also changed out the Praxis Alba crank that came with the bike. It was supposed to initially come with a GRX crank, likes mounted on it now, but um, due to supply chain issues, it was shipped with the Alba unit. Um, I switched out the GRX mainly to decrease the crank length to make it easier for me to pedal, um, but it also gave me a little bit more uh, gearing advantage than the Alba did. The final change that was made was we switched out the Bontrager GR1 tubeless tires uh, to these uh, Schwalbe Marathon tires, um, and over the course of my journey, um, we only got four flats. Um, three of them were due to uh, goat head thorns, and one of them was due to um, the metal wire that comes out of exploded truck tires. Um, caught one of those on the side of, uh, of an interstate. Um, but tremendous tires, didn't see the first flat until 1900 miles. Oh, one other thing. It's probably important to point out that the stock saddle was changed out for a Brooks leather saddle. Um, I know that Brooks is a love it or hate it relationship and I don't recommend it if you're doing a journey of less than a thousand miles because it takes at least 400 to 600 miles to break the seat in. But if you're doing a long range journey, that seat does confirm to your rear, uh, your rear uh, posterior and uh, it does feel really good after, uh, after, uh, after a while on these longer journeys. So I guess the main question is why would you want to take a gravel bike and turn it into a touring bike? Like many of you, I did research on YouTube and fell in love with a YouTube personality called Ryan Dozer. Ryan had a YouTube series a couple of years ago called Love Cycles where um, he and his girlfriend at the time rode from the US West Coast to the East Coast on trek checkpoints. Coast to coast treks only last around three months. You can drag them out, but they last about three months. And so at the end, if you buy a touring bike, you're stuck with a touring bike. And if you don't intend on doing any more touring or limited touring, you're stuck with a touring bike. I wanted a bike that I felt I could use long-term that had a lot more uses for me than touring, like going out on the rail trails with my wife or bike packing with our scout troop. And so the checkpoint seemed like a great thing to have at the end of the tour. I could take off the panniers, I could take off the racks if I liked, I could change it to faster tires or tubeless tires, but it seemed like with a, a gravel bike and specifically with a checkpoint, I had a lot more options. So it's September of 2022 and I'm back and that bike has, between training and the trip, more than 5,100 miles on it. And it's had the living daylight speed out of it. Um, we're talking about tough gravel roads, abandoned parts of US Highway 6 on, in the west, um, where even bridges had been removed and we you know, we took the bike down into, uh, into the dry wash and back up again, it has seen everything. So would I do it again? Would I convert a Trek checkpoint gravel bike into a touring bike? The answer is no. 
But the answer is no for a reason you probably didn't think of. This bike is almost indestructible. I have the utmost respect for it, and I'm glad I own it. And it will be a pleasure to me for years to come. But the main reason I would not have done it is I'm just too heavy for the thing. I went out the door um, training in March at about 210 pounds. And I slimmed down to 200 pounds when I started the trip, and I lost a lot more weight while I was on the trip. But the key here is you've got to put equipment on the bike. In this case, about 47 pounds of equipment are in those panniers uh, on the back and the front, and then the water bottles and the food. It all adds up. It all adds up to I went out the door overweight and train significantly over the bike's uh, maximum carrying weight to train, and I was still very close or above the bike's maximum carrying weight when I left. Um, that's uh, 276 pounds about. So if you add my weight, the bike weight, the weight of all of the equipment, water, and food, that bike was taking a continuous pounding above its weight. But amazing kudos to Trek. It went 4,400 miles between training and, and being out on the epic, uh, epic ride before I noticed any issues with it. And that was um, on the rear, rim, uh, the rear rim, where the spokes meet the rim, five of the uh, 24 spokes developed cracks in the rim. And so as a precaution, I had the rear wheel replaced. The problem was supply chain. I couldn't get Bontrager parts, so I couldn't get a like-for-like -like replacement. And so a bike store, wonderful bike store in Price, Utah, uh, took a brand new specialized diverge wheel off a bike on the floor and mounted it on my bike and got me on the road within hours instead of having to wait almost a week for parts. That ended up biting me in the rear end. While the specialized diverge and the Trek checkpoint have almost identical specifications and equipment on them, they must not be exactly the same because within 15 miles of going out the door, this Axis Elite wheel started to have spoke uh, squeak. And uh, within a you know, hundred or a couple of hundred miles, I broke my first spoke. And then I spent the next uh, month or so as I traveled from Utah to the Golden Gate Bridge, breaking another three spokes, four in total, and being in constant fear that I was going to get stuck somehow in the middle of the desert, walking my bike with a uh, collapsed back wheel. So it seems that the Specialized Diverge can't carry the weight that the Trek checkpoint can. Nothing scientific here, just experience. And obviously the components weren't built to work together, and they're both amazing American brands, so I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to be overly negative here, but the main issue here and why I wouldn't have, you know, why I wouldn't in the future convert this, uh, this bike to a touring bike is that it was just fear. I mean, the f fear of being out in the desert and, and having nobody around and having to walk that thing in, um, I should have gone with a beefier bike and then come home, sold that bike and bought my dream bike, which is behind me. I love the Trek checkpoint. So if I were going to do this over again, me, the heavier rider, I would have purchased a, a Salsa Marrakesh or Surly Disc Trucker, taken that on the epic journey, not worried about breaking spokes or injuring the bike, and then got, when I got home, I would have sold it and then bought this beauty behind me. Um, I love the Trek checkpoint. I want to own this checkpoint long term, but for me, the heavier rider, it was not right to uh, to, to modify it and take it out. I'm just too heavy. Now, if you're under 170 pounds, go for it. But over 170 pounds, by the time you add in the equipment, the water, the food, and the extra water that you'll need in the American West, uh, in the desert, just get a touring bike. As I started the video with, if you found this useful, please hit the thumbs up sign and look for future videos where I will um, give reviews of some of the camping equipment and well, some of the equipment that you see on the bike.